What is up guys, Jarv here, back today jumping into Destiny. In today's video, we're going to show you some tricks and tips on to improve your farming efficiency in Into the Light. Some of these are so broken, you're going to want to do them before they get patched. So be sure to stick around and enjoy the video. Now, as we know, with Into the Light, we saw the launch of Onslaught. Alongside that, we have 12 new brave weapons. Now, you can pick these up as guaranteed shinies by completing quests from our site over in the Hall of Champions. Now, each of these quests has their own objective that requires you to use the weapon type in order to complete it. Now, additional progress is granted in Onslaught when completing these objectives. However, the quickest and easiest way, unsurprisingly, is over in Shiro Chi. By using this checkpoint over in the Dreaming City, you can quickly complete all these quests, which will grant you access to the exclusive created shiny versions of these weapons. Now, some of these quests do take longer than others, so a few suggestions when it comes to the sniper rifle and earning the succession. I highly recommend using Cloud Strike as all the lightning strikes will also contribute towards your progress. When it comes to the heavy grenade launcher, then the Holla Baloo is the standout choice. If you manage to pick up a roll with Volt Shot and Chain Reaction, this makes short work of this particular objective. As for the SMG, you most definitely don't want to be using Recluse to complete this challenge. In fact, you want to use Osteo Striga, and this will make short work, and you can complete this objective in just a few runs. Now, as for the Fallen Guillotine, I used a Chain Reaction Sword, which once again made short work of the objective. And when it came to the Pulse Rifle and Scout Rifle, I left Shirochi alone, and in fact jumped into the Thrallway over in the Whisper mission. This is one of the OG Catalyst spots and it's absolutely top tier when it comes to completing some of the more mundane objectives. So those are a few hints and tips on completing the actual quests, which will guarantee shiny created versions. As we know, Onslaught is the activity of choice when it comes to farming in Into the Light. Now, one of the most important things when it comes to Onslaught is your efficiency to earn scrap. You'll earn this by defeating any combatants in Onslaught and this will allow you to purchase defenses such as tripwires, decoys, and even turrets. Now, scrap is shared amongst the fire team, so you will need to coordinate with your team when it comes to taking out targets, but also establishing which upgrades and defenses to purchase. Now, to help you earn as much scrap as possible, I highly recommend completing as many of the additional objectives as you can. Not only do these provide extra hype, leveling up Lord Shaxx over in the Hall of Champions, but by taking out the additional combatants involved, you'll earn an extra amount of scrap. And as well as the scrap, you'll also earn a heavy ammo spawn, which will spawn directly on the ADU. This can be critical when entering certain phases, especially if you have world bosses spawn, which will be a great opportunity for you and your fire team to dump a shed ton of heavy ammo. The same can be said when you have to run the spark of light. Defeating as many combatants in this area will only add to your scrap reserves. And when it comes to taking out the boss on the 10th wave of every tier, whilst melting the boss is the quickest and most efficient method when it comes to time efficiency, it isn't the most optimal method as these encounters spawn an unlimited amount of ads, making it a perfect opportunity to farm them for extra scrap. Now, upon taking out all the targets and the boss, this will spawn a new portal that will take you back to the Onslaught activity. Now, there is no timer here, so it's a great opportunity to pick up your loot, check it all out, dismantle what you don't need, and even explore the arena for any extra ammo that might be hiding away. Now, it's important to take this extra time to maximize your reserves, and once the entire fire team is ready, then jump through the portal together. If any member of the fire team jumps ahead, this will automatically start the timer when it comes to upgrading or applying defenses, which if the entire fire team isn't ready or is even AFK, then this will hamper you and your team for the next phase of the fight. Now, throughout the Onslaught activity, you will have various opportunities to pass through the Darkness Portal to enter or leave the Pyramids. And these are, in fact, great opportunities to switch up your subclass. If you're a Phoenix Protocol Warlock, you might want to switch to Sunbracers at certain phases. And it's at these phases that you'll have the safest opportunity to do so. Now, the idea behind Onslaught is to build up your defenses and defend the ADU. This is the most important objective and it's something that you should defend at all times. Now, as you defeat certain combatants, they will drop batteries. 
you can throw these at the ADU. If the ADU doesn't have full health, and it will apply plus 15 to your team's reserves. And if it's at full health, it will grant an additional 45, giving you a nice juicy bonus. Now, as we've seen in the past, when balls are involved in Destiny, there's always the opportunity to dupe them. That is actually the case with these batteries as well. If you're a hunter, as you're about to throw the battery, if you dodge, you can actually duplicate the battery. Now, you can only do this once per battery, but it does effectively double the amount of batteries you can throw at the ADU, ensuring that you can always have max health and as a result, always get in that extra bonus, which will only further help top up all your scrap reserves. Now, this brings us nicely onto the defenses themselves. Now, I highly recommend prioritizing decoys. Lots of fire teams dismiss these, but these can in fact tank a tormentor and distract them entirely up to 45 seconds that's an absolutely massive amount of time and can easily be the difference between succeeding and failing now you can upgrade these multiple times and not only can these tank a lot of damage they are persistent and will remain throughout the entire onslaught activity now these decoys are key when you have those boss engagements these will fully distract those tankier targets this will free up you and your fire team to clear all the remaining ads as there are a limited amount that spawn with each boss encounter. This will help you maximize all your scrap, but then also allow you and your fire team to all focus on a single target. Now behind decoys, I would then look at turrets and upgrade these as best as possible. And finally, I would finish with tripwires and only use these once the rest of the defenses are really up to scratch. Now, team composition in Onslaught is important, but so is the strategies when it comes to being efficient as a fire team. I firmly believe a lot of these hints and tips are things that are overlooked and missed, and when paired with a very efficient fire team, can easily make the difference between succeeding and failing. And when it comes to team composition, a Banner of War Titan, Orpheus Rig Hunter, and a Phoenix Protocol Warlock that can switch to Sun Braces when needed seem to be the most efficient combination. Having a team composition such as this means you have a Banner of War available all the time. A Strand Titan is great for taking out single targets too. And a combination of Orpheus Rigs and Phoenix Protocol means you can pin down targets and effectively by cycling between the supers, you can have them available at all times and almost permanently stand inside a well of radiance. This massively improves your team's survivability and also elevates the entire team's damage output. We'll have a video right here on the channel focusing entirely on those builds and how to best set them up. So be sure to stay stuck to the channel and we'll keep you up to date. So there we have it guys, a quick look on some of the best hints, tips and exploits for the Onslaught activity. If you've enjoyed this video, be sure to check out one of the two videos you see here in these cards for more Destiny 2 content. And if you want to keep up to date with everything to do with Destiny 2, then be sure to hit subscribe as well. I'm going to be the game as always guys, and I will catch you all again very soon.